Right, so very, very good morning to all of you. Um, hello and welcome on behalf of uh, all of us. My name is Zaki Anastasio. I'm going to be your host today. Welcome to this uh, special, special webcast. And we're going to be talking about the most uh, common and uh, the most uh, topical topic uh, around at the moment. And that is, of course, coronavirus, COVID-19, and how everybody is working from home and, uh, you know, the challenges that it brings to all of us. So on behalf of, of everybody uh, that's joining me on the panel today, um, myself, Aki Anastasiu, a warm welcome to all of you who are joining us. Uh, it's really wonderful to have you with us. Very special welcome to all of my panelists this morning. And let me introduce all of them to you. First up is uh, Tuli Sekhalo, who's a Gibbs professional associate and founder of Better Me Coaching. Morning to you, Tuli. Hello, Aki. Looking forward to the conversation this morning. Lovely to have you with you. us and joining us all the way from Stellenbosch is Professor Renata Skuman, who's a psychiatrist, head of the MBA in healthcare leadership at the University of Stellenbosch Business School. Renata, it's lovely for you to join us as well. Good morning, Aki. Good morning, everyone. Right. And then um, there's a gentleman sitting on top of a motorbike. Uh, that is uh, Jacques Dutoy, the CEO of Vox Telecom. Uh, I have no idea where you are, Jacques, and what you are doing sitting on that motorbike, but uh, good morning to you. How are you doing, Jacques? Morning, Aki. Good morning uh, from a uh, nice and fresh Pretoria. Doing very well. Can't wait uh, for this uh, presentation today. Okay, well, there you are. The camera is zooming in over there. Uh, th that's a very interesting contraption. I mean, we're all sitting at home, and I'm looking at Professor Skuman, and I'm looking at uh, um, Tuli Sakhalo, who We are sitting at home at our desk, and you're sitting outside. What exactly is that contraption? Okay, I think COVID taught us quite a bit in terms of agility. And uh, I'm sitting today on a sound stage that we used to cart around the country to do uh, uh, fiber activations. We used to pull it out at school events, have live events, uh, broadcast events on it. And then when COVID happened, we, the, that was the end of the sound stage. So we've yes. really done two things with it now. The first one is um, on a bi-weekly basis. I use it to do a company update. So 7.30 on a Friday morning to 7.55. Um, we via a, a Teams broadcast. I will communicate to the entire company. That's one part of it. And then the second thing we're doing is we are, are using this platform to record a lot of training material that we use to send to our staff um, to enhance their, uh, their skills. And then the last one, what we do is we've actually made this platform available to corporates that wants to do exactly the same, i.e. communicate to their staff. So on a Friday morning, the soundstage is pulled out. Whenever you want to, you put your name down on a roster, you come and talk for half an hour to your company. And it's actually amazing okay. to see what the uptake has been. No, absolutely fascinating. Well, listen, it's, it's lovely to have all of you here. I mean, this is the new normal. I've actually lost count of what day lockdown we are. I don't know if anybody's keeping count of these things, but I remember being so anxious in the first like 15, 20 days. You know, the city was silent. We were just shifted into this new normal. Um, and this is how we are doing business. And, uh, and I want to tackle all the issues that we are going through today. And I'd love to hear from our audience as well what you are experiencing and how things are with you guys and how you're doing business in this new normal um, that you're operating under. So please, throughout this entire presentation, we do welcome the questions from the audience as to how you are feeling during this lockdown period, how you're working. Now, Jacques, you've shared, you've shared some very interesting uh, research and I wanna go through it in just a moment, but let me start off with you, Tuli. Um, can you describe for us, you know, what have you been doing during lockdown? How has your life transformed and shifted during lockdown? Okay, so for me uh, personally, Aiki, um, you know, it, it's really been interesting. So I work as a professional associate at GIMPS, uh, yes. doing a lot of uh, leadership coaching with GIMPS. Um, and um, of course, all our leadership programs have a coaching element um, in them. And then, of course, on the other side, I also run my own coaching practice. And, um, you know, as lockdown hit, I was um, really uh, taken aback by the number of cancellation and postponements that were taking place. Um, of course, while everybody was trying to figure out how do we transition um, mm. to this virtual way of working. And then, of course, this, this put to the spotlight all those digital transformation projects that had been underway for years uh, in testing just how ready um, companies are, how ready I was as a, as a business, how ready 
Gibbs was as a business school. And of course, with the halt that happened and then quickly navigating our way back to ensuring that we resume teaching online, we resume okay. um, business online and coaching online. Um, and yeah, so that's, that's been something to watch. And of course, the panic, the first month of panic with all the work exiting the calendars with all the postponement um, really wow. resulted in a panic and, and partnering with clients uh, around what's happening in their space where customers were, were also putting a halt um, on their spend and, and what they planned to spend in 2020. That's fascinating. Professor Renata Skuman, I mean, it's such a massive change. You know, I've been speaking to quite a few executives and CEOs, and what everybody's saying to me is that um, what seemed impossible before lockdown is now possible. And you're looking at the big corporates, I mean, uh, you know, the banks, the big telcos, I mean, most big companies, even if you drive around Santon, the, the most central business district where there's a, a density of offices, most of those people are working remotely. So, Professor Skuman, um, how, how have you adjusted to the lockdown and how, how did your life change? Yeah, I think if we look at three aspects of it, the one would be my work at the business school where we also literally was in basically 48 hours, had to make a plan. Luckily, some, most of the programs already is on a blended platform, which is live, um, real time, but virtual. So we yes. just transitioned our full-time and modular students also onto that. So the business school was well prepared. I think we as lecturers had to go through intense training and really adjusting our, I would say, our style of presentations for the students as well. But that means yes. in my private practice as a psychiatrist, that was a bit more challenging. Yes, within two days, you had transition also all your, your patients onto an online platform. We use Zoom. A lot of patients were very skeptical. The elderly patients struggled. But, you know, we had to put in all that legal um, legalities requirements and technological requirements. And initially, the Health Professional Council of South Africa weren't ready for this, but they also review their statement and views of telemedicine. So we made more strides in the past three months in terms of telemedicine in South Africa than what I think we did in the previous decade. In my that is absolutely life, fascinating. In my personal life, I must say, I really struggled initially when we couldn't go for a run and everything because I'm used to my daily run. Um, and we had a little baby in this time as well, which was also wow. challenging to have a little coronial born with lockdown in the hospitals. That was an additional challenge where there's not visiting hours and, you know, family and friends is not allowed. So it was an interesting time on all aspects of my life. But overall, I like my own space. So I must say, I enjoy the time that we suddenly have at hand with the lockdown as well, because we tend to be more productive and use our time more by wisely. Jeez, that's so interesting. Please tell me you didn't call your baby Corona. Yes. No, <laughs> no, oh. no. <laughs> well, listen, thank you, ladies. And, and Jacques, you know, you've done some very interesting research at Vox Telecom, and I'm looking at, um, you know, the people that have been working from home. This research was conducted like a, a few weeks after everybody had settled into working from home. And it's fascinating to see that most people, the amount of time the most people saved on traveling uh, was, you know, an hour, uh, you know, about 40% of respondents said they saved an hour. Uh, another 10 to 15% said they saved an hour and a half transport costs going back to the office and back. Um, uh, about 35% spent two hours a day, which they've now saved. There's some people that spend three hours a day getting to work, some two and a half hours. So, a lot of those people are saving quite a few hours a day um, because of the uh, of, of the shutdown and working remotely. And it's interesting that um, I would say about 60% of people are saving, well, 60 to 70% of people are saving between a thousand to two and a half thousand rand a month on, on transport costs. And this is just the transport costs. And, and our audience, by the way, we've got them uh, ready and we want to take uh, a poll quickly. I just want to ask our audience, you'll see a poll pop up and I've got the first question for you. If you're working from home, you'll see it. Just answer yes or no and then we'll have the answers straight afterwards. So if you are working from home, uh, would you A, rather work from home than the office or would you B, rather carry on working from home? There are the two options. Um, if you are watching this live, just click on one of the two. Um, and just hit your vote down. I'll give you about 10 or so seconds and we'll get the answers out. And um, I'm keen to see what most people say. I bet you, our guests, uh, I think that most people are going to say, I am happy to carry on working from home in the current status quo. So there we go. Let's see what the answers are to that particular uh, poll that we're running. 
and how many people are going to vote. Wow, look at that. 91% of people say they want to carry on working from home. Sure. The 9% of you, I wonder why, but it will be interesting to see. And Jacques Dutoy, you conducted this interesting survey, um, you know, just during the corona um, shutdown and where people have been working from home. I just touched two of the interesting insights. What, what really stood out for you and how people have changed how they work? Because, I mean, Vox Telecom has thousands and thousands of people that are connected via your various networks and you're really putting the glue together in how we're doing business today. So what, what stood out for you in that research that you guys conducted there, Jacques? Okay, it's been a, a very interesting journey. It obviously started off as an internal survey um, in order to get close and understand what our, our own staff need and what they're concerned about. Um, over time, we've, uh, uh, we've built a whole product set that is uh, for customers wanting to move their staff home. And together with that product set, we've made available the survey. So our data set is becoming a lot richer and a lot more accurate. But what's standing out for me in that survey is initially, right in the beginning, about six, between 50 and 60% of staff said um, they would like to work from home, 40 odd percent moving back to the office. Over time, as we became used to this new normal, and it's not just working from home, it's working from anywhere. It doesn't really matter where you are, anywhere except the office. More and more staff are now starting to realize the benefit mm. of spending more time with your loved ones. They're not just saving money on uh, traveling. There's a whole food, clothes, entertainment, all of that is saving a huge amount of money. They've reprioritized the time that they've suddenly got available. So um, the two, three, four hours you were spending on the road, I can now spend training, um, learning a new skill, you know, spending time with a family. And I think that's been for me the, the biggest surprise is how quickly that shift has gone from 50 to 60%. And as we saw now in your poll to 90%. Oh, that's absolutely fascinating. Um, Tuli, um, as, a, as a Gibbs professional associate and, and, and you, you coach businesses, you coach CEOs, I mean, you've been doing this for many, many years and you work on a, on a business level with guys like Jacques. The, the issue of boundaries and, you know, working from home and, and what does this actually mean for business leadership? And, and I also want to throw something else at this, uh, that the, the importance of communication with your teams and with your employees is critical over here. How, how have leaders in big corporates adapted to this change, working from home, and how do you lead an organization working from home? What have those boundaries and challenges been? Yeah, so thanks for, for that uh, question, um, Aki, and that is a huge, huge question. Um, because at the onset, when the pandemic started, what was crucial, crucial for us at, at Gibbs was to engage in dialogue um, with our customers, um, our delegates, to, to really understand what, is, what are they struggling with um, as we get into the pandemic? What are, what are they struggling with as they are in the middle of the pandemic? And now thinking about what are the big considerations as they transition um, into the, the, the new world of work? And um, so a lot of insights um, came through because for us it was critical that as we um, look at what, what it is we, we designed to meet uh, the needs of the client, the fit for purpose uh, needs that we're designing to meet our clients, that we talk and we get the full on insight as to what these challenges um, look like for the clients. And when we interrogated quite deeply around um, what are clients actually saying to their leaders when they talk about um, the, there's no boundaries with this new ways of working. And what are they talking about when they say, you know, you're calling me in my home and um, there's no, um, what my colleague, um, uh, Queen Ramatsira, who's also a business coach at Gibbs, um, likes to call leadership courtesy. Where is the courtesy of acknowledging that you are coming into my my home uh, to do business and the boundaries around my boss can now call me anytime and the assumption that because I'm working from home that means I have all the time in the world to 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 be on zoom calls to be on these MS teams meetings and and no gaps in between meetings so we've seen a lot around what role can leaders play in really listening to what um, the people are saying. And this has become quite a crucial skill. And, you know, we like to say that, you know, during these hard times, it's the soft skills that are actually the hardest and the most important. And these are the skills of, 
of communicating effectively. And certainly yeah. there's been opportunity with this way of working where um, what we're hearing leaders saying that these um, online communications have actually opened up opportunities to talk to each other more effectively, um, uh, to, to schedule time where people are listening attentively. Um, and, and, and the availability of leaders to engage with their teams has actually grown uh, uh, through these times. And of course, the empathy that goes with um, this whole concept of leadership courtesy. Um, you know, how are you as a leader applying a real understanding around what is actually going on in the home? Here you are, um, what have you taken on board around the person that I'm talking to might not have a, a designated office space at home. They, they're working from a dining room table right in the middle of their mm. home. Um, what consideration as a leader, as you enter that space, are you giving to, your, to the people as you engage with them. And then of course, you know, we haven't even started talking about the impact of um, women leaders that are now working at home, who are also, as you know, traditionally the woman is the designated um, child, uh, child caregiver and what mm. this has meant for them. Um, so for us, it's been quite important to hear firsthand from our clients, how we can best um, partner with them best support them. And of course, this being also an imperative that they still need to lead businesses, looking at what are the skills that are required right now. Um, mm -hmm. The being directive whilst being empathetic, um, leading with conviction, as uh, um, a Prof. Nick ben um uh, likes to talk about, that as you express empathy, as you uh, listen uh, attentively and being present to what your people need, there's still decisions uh, to be made. There's still a need for you as a leader to show up um, in that calm, but also with that reassurance of, of caring mm. for people. Um, and I, if I can just add to that is, you know, for me, it brings up the concept of Ubuntu. Mm. And these leadership qualities that are so crucial now, what we are seeing are actually embedded in our culture already, our culture of Ubuntu, meeting our people um, at a human level um, and being that fellow human companion as a leader has really for me um, what's, what's resonated during this time. And, um, and, and quite positively what leaders have realized through these partnerships is that they're learning just how much potential and talent actually sits within their teams. And that mm -hmm. all these uh, tough decisions do not need to sit with them alone, but through their teams, through that collective wisdom and creating that space, um, uh, a lot actually can be created for, for the future that we are uh, going into. Gee, absolutely fascinating. You've brought so many things up into my mind yeah. that I, I never thought about. Uh, Professor Skuman, um, you, you know, you, you, you're a psychiatrist. You also work at the, uh, at the um, business school at Stellenbosch as well. And you've been really very vocal about, um, you know, mental illness, anxiety and depression through this time. And, you know, I, I mean, I remember right at the beginning of this lockdown, for the first two weeks, I actually became a little bit anxious. I've never suffered from depression in my life. You know, I, I live in a, an environment on my own because, I, you know, I'm a, I'm a single guy. And, uh, you know, I remember the first two weeks just feeling this incredible anxiety and out of my comfort zone, now working, not seeing human beings every day. In your experience, dealing with psychiatry, dealing with depression, anxiety, and I know you've been, done quite a lot of work with SADAC, um, uh, and, and Tully's really opened up quite a few avenues there uh, for, for our next question. What are you seeing in the workplace and what advice do you have for people and business leaders on how to deal with their staff from, you know, all of these people working alone? And, and I see you also mentioned the importance of a routine that you have to put together to deal with the anxiety and depression that lockdown has brought to so many people. I think if we look at the leaders firstly, and then we can talk about what the leaders and the employees should be doing in terms of managing their space and managing their, their time. But if we look at leaders specifically, there's a lot of skepticism in terms of will my employees be productive? Can I trust them? And I think what, what's important to realize is that studies have shown, and there's numerous studies done from Stanford that we have, is that productivity of employees when they work from home or work remotely can increase by 13 to 20%. One reason for that is, for example, what you mentioned about commuting time that's not there, that people now will use to work. 
but the other thing is also there's less disruptions. There's not someone walking past your desk and quickly making small talk. You know, it's mm -hmm. almost like your space can be more focused if you plan it as such. The other thing is that, that from leaders, they must also enable their employees to be more autonomous, to, to have the, the ability to, to create that space for them to act with integrity. People want to impress. There's very few people in the world that wants to do a poor job. We want to impress our boss. You want to impress your team leader. And by working remotely, you have that autonomy, which is very interesting, and that you can you then really utilize your self-management which people then feel equip them to do better work sometimes rather than being in an office where people look busy, but they're not necessarily busy with business. They're busy with mm. all kinds of other stuff. But leaders need to make sure that the environment is still enabling. And I think Tuli touched on a lot of that soft skills that's needed. And I would just like to emphasize again, you have a responsibility to make sure that your employees is technologically enabled. And you need to make sure that communication is clear and concise and regular. And that is extremely important. And also then to look at new ways, new matrices as how to measure productivity. It might not be someone needs to be at work eight hours, but maybe rather look on output um, type of measurements of productivity or even technological stuff that you can monitor with, you know, how engaged people are online, etc. If we then look at what is valid for everyone, not only the leaders, but also for us that's working, um, is then the more the things in terms of how to manage yourself, your space and your environment. And today also touched on some of it, but the one thing is really to have boundaries and to have a routine. And it's so easy, especially there in the beginning, of lockdown the first one or two weeks as you mentioned that we think oh we can sleep later we don't have to get ready for work etc that's, et that's me that's yeah. me yeah and and then work in your pajamas or still sitting in your pajama pants just yes. with another top <laughs> exactly so it's very important to keep to your professional routine your professional routine of getting up in the morning making your cup of coffee getting ready for work maybe you dress less formal at home for sure but still getting ready for work and then also check in with your colleagues early in the morning as if you would have done when you were at work arrange a zoom like maybe just a quick briefing with your team what are you how, how are you this morning what are we going to do today what is the targets for the day and then um get into business Plan out your day. When will you be doing emails? When will you be doing research? And also make it clear to your family and your friends that working from home doesn't mean um, it's an open door policy in a way. You know, there's times where you need to make sure that your door is closed, even if it's not physically possible, but that you can give the message to the people in your space, even by just donning a specific jacket or putting up a sign, do not disturb, that now you're busy with work, you cannot be interrupted at that stage, but that you have the flexibility of taking breaks and really spend it in quality intervals with your family. Wow, that is thing, interesting. Yes, carry on. So the other thing is very important to, to look after yourself, not to be available 24-7, and that is mutual respect. Um, as Tilly mentioned, not only from the leaders, but also from you, that maybe there's an appropriate time to send the email. Even if you write it in an obscure time, don't send it. Because people, it, there's this thing that we all have, the, the reasoning that if we get an email, we have to respond immediately. But we do not have to respond immediately. If it's so urgent, it can be a phone call. But also keep to self-care, make sure that you sleep enough, that you eat decently and don't, don't snack all kinds of junk just because it's next to your computer. And also make sure that you get up and move. We can't sit the whole day behind the computer. It's, mm. We really need to make a concerted effort to get moving even during the day and also to get into a good exercise routine. You know, it's interesting you say that. And, you know, the first two weeks, now my, my typical day starts at 4.30 because my first traffic report is at 5.30. Um, and and I, I got into a bad habit the first two weeks. I would roll out of bed literally at quarter past five. I hope none of my bosses are listening right now. <laughs> in my pajamas. And I would sit in front of my computer and I'd do my traffic reports. Um, and then in the second week, I did something very interesting. I, I actually got up my normal time that I did before COVID. I had a shower, got ready for work, I put on clothes, and it's just amazing the, the, the mental difference that it made to me personally. Is that, uh, was I seeing things, Renata, or is, or is that a thing? Can you actually feel a difference in yourself? Because I did notice that I was more motivated by having got into that routine. So was I imagining things, or is that a thing? 
No, you definitely didn't imagine it. It's very, very important in periods of uncertainty that we keep stable what we can keep stable. So if there's a routine that you used to keep, even if your life is falling apart around you, keep on doing that. I always advise people that's traveling, keep to your exercise routine because that will help to regulate your sleep as well. Now it's the same principle. There's a lot of uncertainty in COVID, especially beginning, but now even new uncertainties. But this uncertainty is mainly revolved around um, my work, well, I have a work, number one. Number two, how will I be coping working from home? Will the technology work? Will I still be in the loop, etc.? The second anxiety was about our health per se, your own health and your family and friends' health. Will they get ill? And then the third type of anxiety is also the, 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 the stuff that we don't know. How long is this going yes. to continue? How long is it going to play out this way? How is lockdown going to okay. look like? How is it going to change? So by keeping something certain, that what you know, keep it certain, you compensate for this uncertainty which can create a lot of anxiety. Listen, the, the, the questions that are coming through are very interesting. Thank you very much to Elaine and Kevin and uh, Francois. We'll get your questions as well. I've got another question for everybody. I, I see that, uh, that Tuli Sahalo and, uh, and Professor Renato Skuman both said that we are being more productive from work, we, uh, from home. Uh, we're working a lot different. Uh, here's a quick poll for you. Uh, it'll pop up on your screens right now. And I just want to find out from you, the, the, the audience that is watching right now, those of you who are working from home, are you finding yourself more productive, A, working from the office, or B, working from home? So there's the poll. Just answer that. Be honest. Uh, are you more productive working from the office as you were before the lockdown, or B, working from home? Let's see what everybody says. I'm going to be interested to see the results. I mean, um, Professor Skuman and, and Tuli, you both said people are being more productive. I mean, the stats are showing that you know the numbers can be as high as 30% increase in productivity. So um, draw, you should be seeing that uh, poll. Draw Abraham says you can't see the poll. I hope you can all see it. Let's see the results of that particular poll. Wow, look at that. 87% of people saying they are more productive from working from home, which is right. Very interesting. Now, Jacques. You heard what Tuli's got to say. You heard what uh, uh, Renata had to say. I mean, you've been leading this as a CEO uh, of this organization. What's, what's been your daily routine like? Are you finding yourself more productive working from home and doing remotely? How, how do you firstly company the size of Vox Telecom working from home? Okay, I think there's a few things that I'd like to touch on. The first one is if we focus on leaders across any business, um, staff wants to know what's going on um good news bad news so i think regular communication and most importantly honest communication just tell them what's happening what's the future of the business like where do we need to focus on and at least that allows them to plan in their own way what i have uh, seen and what we've we've spoken about a lot to our own staff is the person on the other side of the telephone or on the other side of a video conference, even though you've, you've switched your, your, your camera off, will know and can feel if you're sitting in your pajamas. Mm -hmm. So correctly, uh, and it was rightly said many, by both uh, Renata and Tulia, stick to your routine, wake up, shave your beard, brush your teeth, you know, be ready for an engagement as if it was normal. Because the person on the other side can definitely feel that. And then what I've also picked up is, you know, there's always been this tendency that the company needs to give. The company is responsible for my well-being. But I think what COVID has taught us is that um, there's an other side to things as well. I, me as an individual, it doesn't matter at what level in the business, I've got a responsibility to myself to be disciplined, um, to be upskilling myself, because I think the entire world is now looking for a different type of skill set. So yes. unless individuals take on that responsibility and say, what can I invest in? Online training, change my behavior. You're quickly going to see the disciplined person wanting to invest into himself and um, excelling in life and the others will start fading away. And we're seeing that now, two, two and a half months into, into COVID and you're already seeing that people that want to invest in themselves are very, very engaging. 
you know, I'll get more, I've got more meeting requests than ever before because the staff feel, as mentioned before, they want to give back. They want to tell you what they're busy with. And that's a, also an interesting telltale sign, um, you know, if staff are productive or not. Because the guys that disappear off the scene are probably not as productive. Um, yeah, so we've seen a, a, a lot of changes from staff and management both ways. Yeah. But the days of micromanagement is definitely gone. You've got to rely on staff to produce. It's output driven. Um, you can't be like it was at the office, looking over someone's shoulder all the time. So it's a lot more output based, allowing people to take responsibility and ownership. So look, I'm looking at uh, I'm looking at some of the, uh, the the questions that are coming through. Um, um, you know, Nicola says, "Wear your heels, polish your shoes." I don't know about wearing heels working from home, Nicola. Um, uh, Chesney says, "You still got to put your suit and tie on." I'm not sure about that. Um, and if you're a news reader, Francois says you need to wear pants. Yes, I agree with you. I mean, I, I've had a shower this morning. I put on a nice uh, shirt and I'm wearing pants as well. But I've got a confession to make. I am wearing my Crocs, so please don't judge me on that. They, they're very comfortable, but I am, I am working from home, so I'll never wear Crocs in public, but I just needed to make that confession to all of you, um, just sharing it with you. Um, so here's another poll question for you guys, and, and, and I just want to ask each of our panelists. Uh, first, let me ask you, Jacques, how many hours a day are you spending doing video conferences? It's varied. I had to, to, to bring that down quite a bit. Uh, the one day I calculated was 11 hours and 52 minutes. And that was oh kind of a turning point in my life to say, Jock, are you, you are going to go insane here. You're not allowed to do that. So I rely quite a bit on uh, Microsoft has got a, a, a plugin called Focus Time. So it, it forces you to switch off. You don't get notifications. It blocks it out in sections of one to two hours. And you can really then focus on your admin, yeah. making telephone calls. But my worst was 11, close to 12 hours. And, and I think that's where you fall into a trap. Um, you, 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 people will just steal every minute that you've got. So you've got to have a schedule, put busy time out um, and, and, and focus on those other things. Just from my side, I want to add something quickly. When we looked at the poll, that there was 13% of people that said they would prefer to work from work. Um, and I think we need to remember there that people are different. Some people are inspired and infused by energy from seeing people are working around them. So there's definitely people that's more productive when they're out at work. And also um, a lot of empathy with people that had to work with children at home. Um, even now having just one tiny one, it is definitely more challenging. So when there was the homeschooling and everything, it's definitely mm. an additional challenge that some people need to face. Okay. So not, you know what I picked up this morning is there's actually, I spoke to, to a lady and she said the cha most challenging part for her with a youngster, she's got twins, is the school is relying on the parents to teach the kids. So they test the kids on a Friday. Um, she's got to work the entire week, but she's also got a job to fulfill. And I think that's something that not everybody has picked up through this process is what are, uh, what's a working mother and a working father's responsibility at home towards, towards the family. If you've mm -hmm. got to school and, and be productive at work, that's a lot of pressure. Billy, um, I'm looking at you. Um, how many hours a day are you spending on video conferences? Okay, so a lot of hours, um, Aki, and I mean, uh, echoing exactly what Jacques is, is saying around Zoom fatigue and, and Teams fatigue, um, because, and also what I'm hearing from clients is that people look at the diary and they stack meetings back to back. Um, and, you know, by the end of the day, there's, people are, are really suffering from uh, physical aches and not even being able to fit times um, uh, to, to exercise in between, in between those meetings that have been slotted in. And I mean, what, what Jacques also, what I want to pick up on in terms of what Jacques is saying is how innovation has been so agile during this time. You know, and what the space has actually allowed is to say, okay, so how do we ensure that as we transition into this virtual way of working, that the tools that are in place force you to take a break, uh, force you to switch off, um, as Jack was, was mentioning. Um, and the other point that I wanted to bring in is, you know, as, we, as people prepare to go back to work, uh, mm. this hybrid working model and the considerations around that um, and the expectations for, for people to come to work. And I think what we haven't taken on board is that there's been actually a shift in culture 
a shift in organizational culture, as, as you know, has been mentioned by my, my panelists, is that you know, previously you had to see your employee at work to be convinced that they're working. Um, and what this, um, what this pandemic has done is we've been now shifted to measuring outputs um, versus, you know, I need to see you to be doing work. Um, and then, of course, now people have an option, right? From a, a government point of view, you have an option to go back to work. If you don't feel safe enough to go back to work, you can stay at home. On the other side, there's a, an expectation from your employer to come back to work. Um, so there's a culture shift and a culture negotiation that needs to happen that actually hasn't taken place. And what does it mean for job security? Um, what does it mean um, uh, you know, for, for people feeling safe um, around their job and their health? Because um, really the decision to go back to work is, is multifaceted. We cannot look at it as, as, a, as a one, a single decision because it takes into account um, you know, if you're asking your employees to come back to work, are schools open? Who are they going to leave their children with if they're not back at school? Sure. Um, Excellent point. Yeah, so we haven't considered um, a lot of that. And this is, for me, has been a, a phenomenal opportunity in the conversations that we're having with coaches, uh, sorry, with leaders in our coaching mm -hmm. conversations that, you know, you do your best thinking um, in that space to consider the system, the systemic impact of what you need to think about and the navigation of your thoughts so that you can walk out of there with clarity um, of mind around what's the best way to go forward that will serve all the stakeholders that you need to keep in mind. Let's, look, let's get some of your polls answered there. We asked you a question while working from home during lockdown, how many hours a day are you spending on your video conference calls? Um, and look at that, eh? um, most people are spending on average two to four hours a day. Um, there's that 4% who are people like Jacques, who are spending more than six hours a day. And 14% uh, of people are spending four to six hours, which I think is uh, both you, Tuli, and both you, Renata, with your work uh, commitments that you have. But it's interesting to see that, um, you know, video conferencing is the new normal. I'd love to know from our audience, those of you out there, I mean, in South Africa, the biggest challenge for us is connectivity. And, you know, it's interesting I, I had a chat with uh, another company the other day. They were doing some research amongst their staff, and they were saying, what are the things that you really need the most working during lockdown, right? And do you know what the top two things were? The one was a comfortable chair, because we, you know, we take it for granted that in the office, you've got good quality chairs. And B was a second screen to be more productive working from a desk. But the chair was the number one thing that came up over and over. And thirdly, was connectivity. And I want to ask the audience, how do you rate your internet connectivity where you are at the moment and how you're working? Is it A, above average? Or are you one of those people that's got great fiber connectivity? Is it, is it good? Is it uh, uh, average? Or is it really poor? What's your internet connectivity that really allows you to work uh, from, from home? So I'd love to hear your, your, your feedback on that. Um, I see a lot of you are saying we've got fiber. A lot of you are talking about leadership. I'm going to come to a few of the questions uh, in just a moment um, and get our panel of audience to answer that. But let's see what you uh, voted for in that last question. So, well, Aki, to consider in that as well is load shedding, right? Yeah, no, absolutely. And load shedding is going to be a reality again. We heard the warnings today, but look at that. Um, okay, 2% of people say they've got poor connectivity, 9% average, mostly uh, people say they've got good above average, 38%. Uh, so that's, that's a good sign to know. So uh, a, a question for all three of you, I guess, um, I'm, and I'm looking at a lot of the questions that are coming in. I mean, Charlton is talking about this. Um, <laughs> I'm laughing at um, Nazira Naidu, Nazreen Naidu who says she had an interview over, over Teams and she said she wore expensive perfume and wore her high heels during the interview over a video conference. And I guess if it makes you feel good and it gives you that confidence, why not? But when we go back to this, firstly, I want to ask all of you, are we going to go back to what it was like before? And if we do go back, do you think that there will be like a hybrid model that will work? Um, how is it going to be once this corona goes back? What is going to be the workplace like? Um, so I want to ask all three of you that question. So who wants to kick that off? I can, Aki. 
Um, I think with research that's been done, there's definitely certain um, activities that are not going to be relevant anymore um, because we've seen how effective and efficient we can be, um, you know, from, you know, what we, talk, we spoke about earlier on, having to get into a car, navigating traffic to get to an interview. Um, so definitely I, interviews will be online. This, this is my sense. Uh, there, there won't be a need for those face-to-face -face unless one is now being shortlisted. So it's making that process that much more um, um, efficient. Um, and I, I guess also with us business schools, having managed to transition learning online uh, and maximizing on delicate time in the classroom, um, mm. We'll see a lot of that talent development. Uh, certainly, we've seen how well virtual coaching is working. Um, that you know, leaders have been able to to maximize the time commuting to an appointment, sitting in a classroom, um, increased accountability, um, and more uh, more focused attention with this online um, uh, way of working. So certainly, I think those two activities, uh, for me, inform the new normal in being um, effective in how we move forward. Interesting. Renata, and, and, and do you think that um, we will go back to any kind of normality after this, or is this the way things are going to be done from now? Okay, this is the new normal, but I believe we will have a hybrid model in the future. I don't think we will be completely only work from home. There is essential human contact that we need. There's essential soft interactions that we need that's not only about outputs. Most outputs, I think, can happen from home. But when we want to have that more nuanced type of decision making, the nuanced type of interactions that's still personal contact. Um, so I believe most companies will have work from home what's possible to work from home, but maybe still ask you to come in once a week or maybe twice a week for certain essential services or certain, well, certain mm. essential services, not in like medical services. Um, but more the way personal contact is necessary. Um, we know that even brainstorming, you can do very successfully with software like Mural or whatever online, but sometimes it is also nice doing it in person. So I firmly believe it will be a hybrid model, but I also firmly believe we will definitely not go back to where we were. Even for myself and my practice, I see now new patients I will still see in person, but follow our patients as far as possible via Zoom. Yeah, that's so interesting. Uh, Peter van der Holt makes an interesting observation. He says, um, an observation determined during this work from home situation, meetings are shorter and concise, participants are better prepared and decisions are actually made, which is quite interesting. Jacques, are you finding that on your side from, you know, decisions are being made quicker, are you working a lot more efficiently? Is this going to be the new normal for you as an organization at Vox? So, okay, yeah, I think the first thing is um, most important for me, which I think is a, a positive, is more people are included in any meeting than we've done before. Normally, it was one-on-one -on -one or one to two people. Now, you can actually involve the entire group. Yes, we do get to decisions much quicker. And because more people were involved in the decision-making process, that core message has now filtered through to everybody in its original format. So, I do, I do agree with that. Uh, I just want to add something to your previous point, if you don't mind. Um, yes. Will we go back to normal? Um, I think there's two phases. The staff wanting or needing to go back immediately, you know, let's say in level two or level one, I think it's going to be a horrible office environment. Social distancing, you've got to wear a mask, all, and those are must-haves. You, you can't do away with that. But that's not the way we would want to work. That's not the way we used to work. But once that's done... And I think the biggest challenge that leaders will have is how do you continue to, to, to breed that culture and that DNA of that business? Because, you know, like attract like, these, your employees have joined the business for a certain reason. They like what they saw. Um, they like the energy. They're loyal towards the organization. And um, our challenge, and that's definitely my biggest challenge, is how do I keep that DNA intact? And how do I keep the employees as loyal going forward as they were before and where they get excited to work for this green machine? And every single leader, I think, is going to battle with that. And you can't do that if only 10% of your staff rocks up at the office because um, the other 90% is not feeling that passion. 
Yeah, no, very interesting. Um, uh, here's, a, here's another poll for our audience. How are you connecting to the internet, by the way? Are you using uh, fiber? Are you using 3G LTE or even 5G in certain cases? Are you still using ADSL? Um, how are you connecting to the internet where you are at the moment? Um, and it's certainly, uh, I must say, I'm quite impressed at um, the, the speeds and most people don't have major issues with connectivity, which is a good thing. But of course, we, we're talking about built up areas. We're not talking about the entire country. And you know, many people are living in areas that don't necessarily have fiber. So mm -hmm. let's see what you're saying and how you're connecting to the internet, fiber, 3G, LTE, 5G, or ADSL. Those are the results. Most of you are on fiber, which is quite interesting. A lot of you are using mobile uh, networks, 3G, et cetera, et cetera, which is really interesting. Um, Here's a question for you, uh, Tuli, and and um, and this question comes from um, where is it? Uh, okay, I forgot the question. Oh, Donovan, Donovan, Donovan wants to know, and I guess it's like a quite an encompassing question. Now that you've got to work remotely, right? Donovan is a quantity surveyor. How do you start that conversation where you now can't see people and you now have to conduct business online? How, how do you do it? Do you, do you phone somebody up and say, can I have a Zoom meeting? I need to run a couple of proposals for you. You know, marketing and networking methods in this new no way of doing things where in the past, you'd pick up the phone and you'd say, hi, can I come and see you this afternoon? How do you do it now in this digital world during lockdown, Tony? Yeah, so Aki, I think it's, it's, it touches on um, what Jack spoke to. Uh, this ability to communicate um, authentically and effectively. And I think for me, what is important for, for, for Donovan to think about is, you know, as you think about engaging and building those relationships, you must really believe in, in what you want uh, to, to give the, the person, the client, right? You must be authentic, you must be real, it mustn't be op opportunistic. And as I say that, this is the same as what you would have done previously except now you, you're applying those same skills in an online context. Because people can still sense through this virtual platform whether you are being authentic or genuine in when you are communicating with them. Mm -hmm. So the same reach out needs to have the same um, intent of being genuine, of being uh, intentionally wanting to bring in value uh, uh, to, to the client that you want to engage with. So the approach is yes, of course, virtual. And in that first connect, in that virtual connect, you, you show up as your genuine self, as you would in building a, a relationship with a new, um, a new client, with the same genuine interest, the same genuine uh, um, uh, um, co uh, you know, connection that you would build with them. And of course, most importantly, um, bringing in that attentive listening and curiosity to really understand what the other person um, uh, is saying on the other end and, and responding with, that, um, with what shows that you've been listening and being present to what's needed um, in, in that moment. So I would say really uh, it's bringing in your values as well into those conversations and, 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 and more now, more than ever uh, um, to hold on to those values. Mm, very interesting. Okay, if I can um, add, yeah, I think the, yeah, uh, uh, for me, nothing has, has really changed in terms of the initial engagement. We all picked up the phone. We would phone cold prospect. Hi, this is who I am. Can we take it further? Yes, please come and meet with me. Today, that meeting happens in a, in, in a virtual way. The one thing that I do think has changed completely is the asking yourself the question, is my value proposition still relevant? Because the person I'm talking to on the other side, his whole life has possibly changed. And what I had to offer yesterday might not be relevant to him tomorrow. And I think that's one big question that all of us are faced with is to go through mm. our products and our services and say, is, is that still relevant in today's life? Gee, that is, that is just great advice. Um, Renata, there's an interesting one that's coming in, you know, when we're talking about companies that are working all remotely, um, you know, and, and the camera has just been the new way of your window to the world, right? How, how do you deal in an organization with people who are traditionally very quiet in a company that don't say much, but you want to get them involved in the day-to-day -day activities of, of the company? I mean, a camera and being vocal like we are right now can be very intimidating for most people. How, how do you get out of that? So people that feel intimidated, um, 
you know, they were intimidated before the lockdown uh, by talking up in a meeting. How do you get over this intimidation of this screen that's sitting in front of us? Very interesting. We, we had people being wary of the screen initially, but although we hypothesized that the people that was introverted, shy, etc., would be struggling with this, we find that they are actually doing better. Especially in, um, if you have team meetings, the quiet person, which maybe usually would have been intimidated by the more dominant outspoken person and wouldn't have spoken up in a team meeting, now on Zoom, they find their voice. So it, it's interesting that it's almost like the screen, although it's in your face and people in general are awkward with, with um, cameras and lenses, it shows that it also creates a little bit of safety for them. They're on the other side. And we really find that they are more interactive. I've seen it both with my students and with some of my colleagues when we have meetings at the business school, but I also see it with my patients. Some patients that I thought, you know, they would really struggle with it, anxious people, and also the um, non-neurotypical people, people with autism, for example, they really, they, they find their voice on this. So I think we must be careful to generalize to say that people struggle, but there will be people that might say, you know what, I have a bad day, day today. Can I just use my voice and switch off the, the video? And that yeah. shouldn't be held against them. That is such an interesting observation, you know, and it actually makes sense what you're saying. I think people get a little bit more confidence. They probably feel less intimidated in front of the camera. I'm looking at some of the comments people are saying that they miss the, the body language of somebody that you can't really tell uh, from being on a virtual conference. Um, here's a great question here from, well, it's just a thought from Gary Hill. He says, thoughts around reimbursement for internet connectivity and the costs that you're incurring working from home organizations are saving not having employees at the office. And this is the next question in the poll is, is your company subsidizing your costs working from home? Um, and right now, as it stands, when your company, are they subsidizing all the costs? Are they paying for all your connectivity? Are they paying for a bit of your coffee, uh, the lunch? I don't know what else they might be paying. Your chair, for example, are they partially paying? Do you want them to pay more? Or is your company paying zip of your current costs now that you are in lockdown? I'd love to hear this because I tell you, this is going to be a big, big thing for many people going forward. If this is the new normal, can companies are saving big on costs like office space, they're going to pass the costs on to the employees. Let's see those results. Oh my gosh, that took me by surprise. I don't know about the panelists. 60% of people watching this webinar say that their company is not contributing a cent to working from home. 20% are saying companies paying for all the costs. 20% uh, are saying yes, partially, but they should be paying more. Jacques, does this come as a surprise to you? No, it's actually not at, not at all. Um, I mean, I've had lengthy debates internally as well as with external customers. And I think this could very easily become a one-sided argument. And I'd like to bring some perspective to it. Um, companies right now, their whole economy is suffering. Um, so it's not like companies are saving a fortune out of not paying rent. They've still got commitments in terms of rent, but they've got a drop in revenue. So it's not like oh, I'm saving and what am I doing with that saving, putting it into the company's back, bank account. The second thing that a lot of people are not um, uh, uh, being honest about is they've got internet at home. They've got an uncapped fiber service. The kids are using the, the internet. They're streaming more movies than ever before. Um, they're using the printers. Let's say you gave a printer. How do I control that employee that he's using that printer for office and official work only and not printing the kids' textbooks? So I think it's a, a big debate. Is there a responsibility from organizations to pay for everything? I actually don't think so especially not in these times, because you've, you've been paying for your fiber all along. It's an uncapped service. And maybe it's uh, the point in our lives where you've got to ask yourself the question is, how can I also help my company? So they're helping me, they're keeping me employed, they're paying me my full salary. And then the last part that's, that people are missing is employees are saving a fortune. And we spoke about that earlier, saving on uh, business attire, saving on takeaway meals, saving on traveling, saving on insurance, petrol, et cetera, et cetera. So I think companies will say, I'm happy to subsidize all your connectivity, but whatever you are saving, are you prepared to take that um, and give that back to the company? Mm. And I studied no. some research this morning out of the US. 
uh, it was a report drafted by McKinsey, 68% of US uh, of, of people in the US, 68% of them who's been given the opportunity to work from home are prepared to take up to a 20% cut in salary. That was a, a astonishing figure. I never, I was expecting a figure of 5%, up to 20% cut in salary from 68% of the, of the people wow. who surveyed. You know, it's interesting you, you say the things that you say, because, I mean, I'm looking at some of the comments. Uh, some people saying that they've only filled up their car once since the lockdown. They're spending less money on clothes, less money on transport. You, you're spot on. I, I guess there's going to be like a balance that has to be achieved. What are you seeing business leaders doing, Tuli? So, Aki, I think uh, for me what's been key is it's so important for leaders to engage in conversations with their people. That partnership and not sit and, and make the decision uh, without um, engaging and partnering with people. Because certainly what we've seen as leaders have navigated this uncertain uh, territory that we've been in, they've been able to, to, to mine such wisdom from their people. And through that partnering and engaging and arriving at um, a decision that says to people, okay, we have been given a platform, we have been listened to, we have been heard, we have been considered and taken in, uh, into account in what we think and how we feel. And therefore the decision that eventually gets taken has our input mm. and our consideration in there. Um, so that, that collaboration, that communication and that care um, um, it really sits at, at, the, at the forefront at how leaders navigate and facilitate uh, these conversations that impact people's lives and livelihoods. Yeah. Uh, Renate, I don't know if you have anything to weigh in on that uh, with, with regards to the costs and everything, but I think it's something that needs to be uh, very sensitively handled uh, by most organizations. Yeah, I, I think, again, I can speak from me being in the private practice and what patients are telling me and what other colleagues are telling me and also what I see at the university. So the University of Stellenbosch was extremely supportive in terms of making sure that people have the technology that they need. Um, for the students, for example, they negotiated laptops, they negotiated free data for students. So really the university did brilliantly in that sense. And I think that's very important as to be mentioned that that leaders of organizations should engage and see what people need. We can assume they need more data. We can assume they, they need, you know, uh, uh, be compensated for coffee, for example. And as you mentioned, they might just ask, please, can I have a chair? Or please, can I have a second screen? Um, which mm -hmm. might make all the difference. So communication is crucial. In terms of my own situation, um, we have extra expenses in the practice in terms of um, the, all the sanitizing equipment and all the security and safety stuff that you need to do. Your income is half because you only see patients every alternate slot. Um, a lot of patients prefer not to come in and ask cancel till later. So, you know, people, um, I saw some of the comments that said people's net profit in increase. I think most businesses are struggling, except if you're in yeah. certain like IT where this was a great opportunity for you. Um, so businesses are taking strain. Um, I hear from colleagues and patients, some organizations are compensating and supporting, some not. But I, I think that there is an um, argument to be made that we are saving other costs like on your car or on your petrol. And maybe, you know, if you go and make the sums, maybe you're still actually better off. Fantastic. Well, listen, I'm, I'm going to give each of you uh, 30 seconds to just wrap up because we have come to an end. And I'm looking at uh, all the panelists and many of you asking if this is going to be recorded. Yes, it's going to be recorded. And yes, you will be able to share it. We'll put out the link after this broadcast. But let me ask each of our panelists just to sum up and their thoughts going forward in, in 30 seconds. I know it's a short time uh, on, on, on just uh, 30 seconds of advice, 30 seconds of wisdom. And I'm also going to throw another one at you. To, uh, give me your aha moment. Have you had an aha moment during this lockdown period and your thoughts on closing? Um, so I don't know who wants to start with that particular one, um, but I'll go to Tuli. She's nodding her head. Tuli, what's been your aha moment and what are your closing thoughts? Um, Aki, my aha moment during this time is how positive people have been, um, you know, in embracing what is, what is possible 
during this time as they look forward to, to the pandemic. And for me, it really always talks to the human spirit, right? The human spirit is, is just phenomenal. And I mean, really, I'm going to throw something left field here to, to seeing how Dr. Nkosa Zamna Zuma has become uh, this really famous rap artist. She didn't know she had that talent. And the joy <laughs> that she brought to the country with that rap song has been phenomenal. The, you know, the, while kids one. are... Yeah, while kids yeah. are sitting at home, not going to school, here's something that was lifting their spirits uh, as a wave in our country, you know, like only in Mzansi. Um, yeah. So for me, that's, that's been an aha. But in terms of leadership, um, you know, really recognizing that during this pandemic, more than ever, we've realized just how important the role of leaders is. Um, and that with the right approach, uh, leadership approach, partnering with, with, with people. And we are so fortunate in our country because we have the spirit of Ubuntu um, as, as a guiding compass for us. That, you know, this crisis is actually an opportunity for us to move forward. And already we can see the innovation that uh, mm -hmm. businesses have been able to, to, to come up with as we look forward to, to this new normal. Wonderful stuff. What about yourself, Jacques? Uh, what's been your aha moment and your closing thoughts in 30 seconds uh, about this lockdown? So my aha moment was about two weeks into COVID. I mean, that first two weeks was hair raising. We were all unsure how to adapt to this new normal, very scared of what the future uh, was holding. And two weeks down the line, I could just see everybody in Vox putting together taking on responsibility, saying, right, where can we help? And for me, that was to look back and say, we've gone through two weeks of chaos and 1,700 people have found new direction and purpose in life. That was very special. And then going forward, I think for me, the most important thing is to maintain agility. If, if we can't change the way uh, we've been doing things, if we're not prepared every day to take a checkpoint and say, what do I need to, different, to do different today? I think it's gonna be very tough to survive. Um, yeah, and I think the lesson for me from COVID is just maintain that lifestyle of agility. Well, for Renata Skuman, what's been your aha moment and your closing thoughts of wisdom? This is nothing personal, Aki, but my aha moment was definitely that virtual screens and virtual backgrounds is very disconcerting for me because initially oh. I saw people on the beach and on, on the San Francisco bridge, etc. And I got a nice virtual background. And then I realized it created more dissonance in my brain because in a way, this is so real having someone right in front of you and in your space, but your brain struggles because the person is not physically here. And then if I have a virtual background in the mix, I get all confused. So now I've just got comfortable with people seeing my little office space at home, even though it felt extremely intrusive initially. Um, for me, the biggest thing going forward is maybe more on a human level, not necessarily on the work level, is gratitude. To really, we can either focus on all the inconvenience of working from home and the struggling with the family and the struggling with the children that's pestering you and the cat that's mowing and the connectivity that's not great and you have to wear an uncomfortable mask or whatever, or we can focus on the gratitude that we have. We have a computer, we have a work, we have our health, we have all these amazing opportunities and the ability to learn in this situation. Oh, just incredible stuff, guys. And uh, a big, big thank you uh, to our panelists, uh, Jacques Dutoy, the CEO of Vox Telecom, and thank you to Vox for making this happen. Thank you so much. Uh, Tuli Sahalo, Gibbs, Gibbs Professor, Professional Associate and founder of bettermecoaching.co.za. Check out her profile. Prof. Renato Skuman, psychiatrist, head of the MBA in health leadership at the University of Stellenbosch Business School. Uh, please, um, a big, big thank you to all of you for joining us and sharing your wisdom and to our incredible audience. Your questions have been amazing. I've certainly found this very useful. Um, and the aha moments went, wow, wow, wow. And here's a question I want to leave all of you with. Before the lockdown started, what seemed impossible became possible. Ask yourselves, what else is impossible in your lives? What else are those challenges that you think you can never overcome? We did overcome them doing business like this. What else is impossible that you can overcome? Thank you for joining us. Please enjoy your weekend. Be safe out there. Keep those hygiene protocols. This virus is getting out of hand across all of us. Don't drop your guard at all. Wash hands, wear a mask, safe following distance, and please be healthy and be safe and have a wonderful weekend. 
on behalf of the entire team, thank you for joining us for this live webcast.